Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 638. Unexpected Beneficial Results of Testosterone and Estradiol Pellets in Women. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. A month or so ago, I was uh, seeing a patient in the office who came to me for hormone replacement for various reasons, sleep and uh, sex drive and um, fatigue. And when I was talking to her, she mentioned that she had a problem that her gynecologist was trying to treat but wasn't getting any better. And it was something that she hadn't even written on her history because she didn't expect me to have any answers for her. Uh, it was ca- it's called lichen sclerosis of the vulva or the vagina, the area around the vagina on the outside of the vagina, which is actually an um, autoimmune, they believe, type of um, illness. And it causes the skin to be attacked and get very thin and itchy and brittle and red. And anything that rubs against the skin of the vulva, which is your bottom, the area around the vagina, uh, labia and um, areas around the rectum as well. Uh, anything that rubs on that causes this to itch and burn and hurt. There are very few things that uh, we can treat it with because when we use, say, estrogen cream or steroid cream, it actually burns more. So it's a it's a very tricky problem. It's not very common, and um, and it was one that I really didn't expect. Uh, our systemic type of estradiol and testosterone replacement to have much effect on. Because they've they've tried oral estrogen, oral uh, progesterone, and that has not worked. So I that's what I knew about it through my GYN training. So I said, well, you know, testosterone in some cases can help autoimmune diseases. So let's see what happens. Kind of keep your eye on your symptoms and see if they get better, worse, the same. And I'll ask you about it when you come back. So this was more than a month ago because it was her first visit. And then um, she, she said, at that time she said, there's no way, this isn't going to be treated. My GYN said, this is it for life, I'm going to have this. And it made it very difficult for her to have sex because she would... She'd have pain and bleeding, and her skin would tear when she'd have sex. So it was was not a pleasant experience. So after three and a half months, she came back to see me after she'd been treated with estradiol and testosterone pellets. Uh, She came in grinning from ear to ear and sat down at my desk slash table, and um, she said, you know what? It's gone. And I was, it was a miracle. She thought it was a miracle. I thought it was a miracle. I thought that that this was an illness that was not going to get better. Maybe it would get a little better. Maybe it would be tolerable with testosterone and estradiol, but but it hadn't in in the articles that I'd read, it hadn't been they hadn't done a research on pellets and this particular illness, and she was ecstatic. So <laughs> Her doctor, of course, didn't believe that the testosterone and estrogen had anything to do with it and said it was just a coincidence. Um, I I kind of understand that, but I've seen other diseases and other problems that uh, are not expected to get better, that are not expected to get better with hormones, and that may have some research on them, but the research is kind of buried or it was done a long time ago and nobody ever uh, really... Um, took it into uh, actual practice, into medical practice. So um, there are other things besides autoimmune problems that can get better with hormones. And one of my um, patients had been taken off. She was uh, in her late 70s. She'd been taken off estrogen by her doctor 
and uh, told that she was too old to have estrogen. And this was a woman who traveled everywhere. She was very independent. She had lost her husband, but she was still active. She had lots of friends. She was, uh, in the description by her son, she was this amazing, energetic, 70-something-year-old. But he told me, I'm sending her to you because she she's very um, agoraphobic. She's afraid of leaving the house now, ever since she went off estrogen. And she... <laughs> He said, I don't know if I'm going to get her to your office. So that was the first, that's the first step is to get her to my office and, and to get her out of the house to get her blood drawn. So uh, she had had a hysterectomy and her ovaries had been removed. And, and so I didn't expect her to have any estrogen or testosterone and she didn't. So I did look at her, at her um, lab and she was very healthy otherwise, except for these two things. And Agoraphobia is considered a psychiatric illness. It is considered a problem of the mind. It is not considered a problem of the physical body. So um, I know that the mind and the body are well connected, and there are many things in the body that cause trouble with the mind and vice versa. So I, I had said to her, just try this. Just, just try it once. Just give me a shot at getting you back to your normal state. And she was so, she was very sad that she was not the same person she used to be. She knew it, but she was, she was so afraid of leaving the house. I mean, it was, it was hard to get her to my office the first time. In any case, um, her depression and her anxiety completely went away in four months. When she came back, she was her, the self that I'd never met before. She was assertive and funny, and she was outgoing, and she was planning a trip to Greece. <laughs> I'm like, this is a whole different woman. She no longer had agoraphobia. She wasn't afraid of, of leaving the house or anything. She wasn't afraid of getting on a plane. She could go see her other children who were outside of the city. She could get on a plane and go visit them. I mean, without her estrogen and... Um, testosterone, I guess. I mean, she hadn't had testosterone replaced, but both of them helped her actually get her brain and, and her spirit back. So this was very surprising to me. I didn't expect it. There aren't, I couldn't find any kind of research on this kind of a development, but it was so, her son had seen the change after she stopped the estrogens or the Premarin. So I knew that it had some kind of tie to hormones. So, uh, so I did somewhat expect an improvement. I didn't expect this much of an improvement. And she was back to normal and continued to take her hormones uh, after that. So she stayed the same person. It's amazing how we can be and act differently when we have different chemicals, or I call hormones chemicals. They're liquid substances that affect every cell in our body. So it does really change who we are when we don't have those anymore. And it may explain why um, people who are older, older than probably 75, don't like to go out and do things, are afraid of things, are, you know, they, they, don't, have that, they don't have that kind of um, confidence anymore. And it, it may just be a chemical change by not having hormones. Um, my, my third most, um, my third biggest surprise when using testosterone and estrogen with patients was a patient that I um, had with an autoimmune disease that um, I may have mentioned her before because she's, she's quite, she was, she, she's in my mind uh, frequently. Um, she was uh, a young woman who had, who developed lupus and had several children, small children, and, and she was in the prime of her life, but she had developed an autoimmune disease called lupus. And on top of lupus, which affects your kidneys and your joints and, and, your, and sometimes your skin, she also had a, a blindness, a progressive blindness uh, that was not stopped by any of the treatments that they were giving her at a tertiary care center here in St. Louis. Um, a research center. 
and they were giving her injections of steroids into her eye. And that was a every week, every two weeks, she'd get these injections into her eye to try to save her vision in one eye because she had already lost the vision in her other. She came to me because uh, during the treatment of the lupus, she had been treated with steroids quite a bit. She'd gained 50 pounds. She was miserable, depressed, sad. She was losing her vision. She wasn't able to do things with her children. She was tired. Um, in the meantime, she had, um, she had had a hysterectomy during this whole change and process, so she had no hormones left. And they had taken her ovaries out, but she wasn't even 40 yet. So my heart went out to her, and she, she just wanted to have her body back and her energy back. If she was going to have to live this life blind, she wanted to have the rest of her body in tune so that she could live her life and stay married and make her husband happy and still have sex. And she just couldn't do that at this point because of the lack of estrogen and testosterone. So I, I have treated many other people with autoimmune diseases. And in general, these autoimmune diseases either improve or they stop progressing or they slow the progression down. Um, included in that is rheumatoid arthritis and MS. So I've, I've done this before with other illnesses, but I had never had a patient who had lupus blindness. And it is very rare. But I, you know, she asked me if this was going to affect it or if it was going to improve it. And I said, I have no idea. I don't know if it's going to improve it. I, I doubt that it's going to be negative in any way because testosterone itself really does help autoimmune diseases. It, it's a modulator of your immune system. So if your immune system is overactive and attacking the wrong tissue, it calms it down. If you're underactive and don't have an active enough immune system to kill bacteria and viruses, it actually improves it and brings it up to speed. So how does it know? I don't know that. It just, it, it's a modulator of the cell, cells in that, in, in that organ. So when she came to see me uh, after four months, she, she proudly told me that she no longer needed the shots in her eyes, that, that her sight had stayed where it was when she came to see me four months before. It had not gotten worse. And her ophthalmologist was patting himself on the back for doing such a great job, and she said she didn't want to hurt his feelings, so she didn't tell him that it was really the testosterone that was doing it. So, so uh, in any case, I wasn't going to tell him, and, uh, but she was better, which is all I really cared about. And so her sight did not continue to get worse, which I was grateful for and thankful for, but that's not something that I trained with and knew that this was going to have any effect on that in, the, in a positive way. So, so these are some of the surprises, the happy surprises that I get when treating patients with this particular form of estradiol and testosterone to try to bring their hormones back to normal for lots of different reasons and uh, to bring their muscle mass back, to bring their sex life back. She had lost her weight. She felt better. She was wearing the clothes that she wore before this all started. So she's, uh, so her life improved greatly, but the, I expected that. I did not expect the blindness progression to stop. And I was, I was very relieved that I had had a part of that. I'd helped with that, and her life had been made more full, and she could enjoy her children and her husband. So there's more to that story, which I won't go into, but um, there is a lot of research on autoimmune diseases and testosterone. Now, rheumatologists actually believe that hormones, and they lump every hormone into one bag of hormones, and they say hormones cause autoimmune diseases to be worse. Well, that's not true. If you just take estrogen and you don't take progesterone and you don't take testosterone, it is possible for estrogen to make the autoimmune response a little worse. But if you take testosterone in pellet form, not in oral form or not in 
gel and not in patches because that turns into estrogen. But if you take it in the pure form in pellets, it decreases the autoimmune response. So I dose my patients who have autoimmune diseases with a slightly higher dose of testosterone than I would normally give them if they didn't have this, and a slightly lower dose of estrogen so that the overall effect is to improve the autoimmune disease, to stop the attacking of the, of the uh, immune cells toward the body's tissue itself. And in that way, it does make our patients better. It's not, in, um, it's not something that in anyone's hands, they throw some hormones at it, it's not going to get better. You have to actually think this through and try to treat with a non-oral testosterone and a non-oral estrogen that don't turn into more estrogen when you go through the GI tract called the first pass effect. You don't want that first pass effect. You want to have pure estrogen and pure testosterone, just like your ovary used to make. And it's interesting that the autoimmune diseases in women, and they're much more common in women, occur at a time in a woman's life when her testosterone is dropping, before her estrogen drops. So it's usually between 40 and 50. That also goes along with the fact that testosterone prevents autoimmune diseases and in people who are taking testosterone during that during that stage of their lives and beyond and it also goes along with when men get their tes- their autoimmune diseases which is usually after 55 when their testosterone becomes uh, not adequate they don't ever stop making testosterone in general but they their level gets too low to keep their immune system in check So it is related, and in many articles, there are articles about testosterone and the autoimmune effect. So I have a lot of backup for what I say. And I have my personal personal experience with treating people with autoimmune diseases. But when I was trained with giving patients uh, estrogen and testosterone pellets, I was not trained with the fact that it would improve autoimmune diseases. I didn't even know that until I did this long enough and just serendipitously it did improve autoimmune diseases. Then I went back and found the research on it. Then I was more confident in talking to patients who had autoimmune diseases and it has been um, a lifesaver in many circumstances and kept people uh, on the lowest dose of drug for their autoimmune disease or even off the drugs for autoimmune diseases. So those drugs have a lot of risks in, in themselves that testosterone doesn't have. So in any case, now uh, you're learning along with me, with my experience and with my taking care of patients who I never anticipated uh, would be completely better by taking hormones. And now you get to, uh, you have heard the joy I have in seeing people get better when there was no other treatment for them, and this actually was the treatment for their problems. Thank you for listening today. I hope you learned something. Please join us next week. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.